welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Progress is being made with the implementation of the Hydrogen South Africa Research, Development and Innovation Program. Keith Campbell joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Keith. What is the aim of this program? Well, the fundamental aim of the program is to develop a, a whole new uh, industry in South Africa. The intent is to create the ability in South Africa to design, manufacture, uh, use domestically and export globally uh, both complete uh, hydrogen fuel cells and key components of hydrogen fuel cells that would be used by manufacturers in other countries to incorporate uh, into their products. Uh, the key point about hydrogen fuel cells, of course, is that they are non-polluting. They don't emit uh, any uh, emissions, uh, whether we're talking about particulate or polluting emissions or greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, they are quiet. Uh, they are efficient. The big problem is at the moment is that they're expensive to build. The program has been divided into three phases. What will each entail? There are three phases to the program and the three aspects to the program. The three phases are uh, five-year periods. The program was launched in 2008, so the first phase was completed in 2013. The second phase will be completed next year, 2018, and the third phase will be completed in 2023. The three aspects are the three centers of uh, competence created to implement the Hydrogen South Africa, our HISA program. Now, what happens within the fuel cell is a process called catalysis, and HISA catalysis is aimed at improving uh, the process, making the technology cheaper, and they've already developed a line of uh, electrodes and other uh, components for fuel cell, which are being marketed by a spin-off company they created called HiPlat. Uh, HISA infrastructure is looking at improving the production, the storage, the distribution of hydrogen, and at uh, critical uh, ancillary issues such as regulation, safety codes, legislation, and so on. And so, for example, they're looking at different ways of storing hydrogen more efficiently, uh, using uh, much improved but much cheaper cylinders uh, made out of composite materials. Uh, these are called, in the world market, these are called type 4 cylinders. And uh, they will soon be uh, testing the first prototypes of these locally designed, locally developed composite cylinders. Uh, which store hydrogen like um, any other gas is stored in uh, cylinder under high pressure. The more exotic work is being done what they called metal organic uh, materials, uh, which uh, store uh, hydrogen at much lower pressure, uh, but at v need very low temperatures, minus 190 degrees centigrade and below. Uh, HISA Systems is putting together concepts from the other two centers of competence to produce working prototypes and they're also doing research uh, in uh, a different form of hydrogen storage called chemical carriers, you know, like uh, ammonia has a lot of hydrogen in it. Uh, it's uh, chemical uh, formulas NH4. Ammonia can be stored in liquid form at only minus 40 degrees centigrade. The drawback is it's toxic, but it's one of the things looking at. And uh, they're also looking at uh, something called metal hydrides, uh, which have the drawback of being very heavy. But in certain applications, that is an advantage. 
Uh, one application, uh, for example, is to use a fuel cell to power a forklift truck. Uh, and the weight of a metal hydride storage system is very useful because it provides ballast for forklifts. Forklifts need ballast if they're going to lift any kind of significant weight. Interestingly, one of the operational prototypes uh, under uh, test is a hydrogen fuel cell powered forklift. This was unveiled uh, a while back and it's operational at Impala Platinum. And apparently it's been such a success that Impala Platinum would like to procure more of them because they have the hydrogen fuel infrastructure in place so the logistics side is no problem for them and they are very impressed with its performance. And there are certain other prototypes under test in the country at the moment. How has the Department of Science and Technology responded to the technological challenges of deploying hydrogen fuel cells? Well, there are two aspects. This. Firstly, the need to build skills. When this whole program started, South Africa had virtually no expertise uh, in hydrogen fuel cell technology at all. The country was it's one of the world's most important, if not most important, producer of platinum group metals. Platinum uh, metal, group metals, especially platinum, are uh, preferred currently for use in fuel cells. That's why uh, South Africa is busy pursuing this line of research and development and innovation. And they first had to create local expertise. Uh, they had to bring in foreign researchers who knew what needed to be done and could provide training and mentorship. And since the program was launched in 2008, it has produced 59 uh, PhD and master's graduates of whom about 50 are actually employed on the program. So the country has created a core of expertise in this field that didn't exist before. The other things they're looking at, uh, the, the, this falls under high infrastructure, are uh, the regulatory framework, the legislative framework, what laws need to be passed, what regulations need to be passed to make the use of hydrogen fuel and hydrogen fuel cells uh, possible, um, what regulations are needed regarding safety and so on and so forth. So they're looking at the entire uh, legal regulatory safety framework as well. Uh, they're also uh, looking at the issue of publicizing the whole issue of hydrogen fuel cells and their use and the usefulness to the wider South African public. And then of course finally there's the actual technological research and development that I've already mentioned being carried out by three centers of competence. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.